Welcome to LiveAnimated.com. Let's learn something new. Today we're going to be going over Rig to Art V2. I'm going to open up a character, bring that character in to our Maya scene. Make sure that character is set up correctly. Open up a new Maya scene, reference in that character, and then start laying out the rig. So let's jump right into it. Have your Maya scene open. This can be a completely new scene. We are going to navigate to our nor our character, just where it exists right now. So let's go to our character. And you're going to want to name the file if you haven't. Just name it mesh, underscore mesh, whatever the name of it is that you have currently. So here's the character. Some of the things to keep in mind, let's go into our preferences right quick. So go to Windows and go to general editors no go to settings and preferences and then go to preferences we want to go to settings make sure this is at 30 frames per second because that's what we're going to be animating to might as well get in good habit of setting that now and then make sure your z is up z is up is important for when you start exporting your character if it's y up with your character that's fine change it to z up what that's going to do in most cases it, it's going to take your character and your character is going to be like this on the ground that's fine as you can see you see it has like a negative 90 on here that may be zero for you when you bring in your character because you know it was brought in at y up so what we're going to do i'm going to undo this but what you're going to do is take that and add it to a positive 90. once it's a positive 90 your characters are going to be standing straight up the way you want it to next thing you're going to do is hold down the space bar and go to modify and freeze your transformations freezing your transformations is going to be important for exporting and making sure that there's no uh, values in your channel box over here for your position and rotation values. You always want those to be zeroed out when you're working with the model. Once you zero out um, everything for this character and it's rotated up, your pivot might be in the center um, or it might be down at zero, zero, zero. If it's at zero, 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 that's perfect, but it might be in the center. If it's in the center, you can press D and W, well, <laughs> not in that order, obviously, right? So let me go back. W takes you to uh, where you have your gizmo with its XYZ. E makes it where you're on your rotations. So let's go to W first. W will turn it to the position uh, gizmo. And then what you want to do is hit D. You're going to see it changes a little bit over here if we zoom into it. What this allows you to do is you can now move this pivot around without moving around the mesh, which is what's what you're going to want to do. Again, we're going to want to snap to the grid. Snapping to the grid will allow us to ensure that we are going to have our pivot at 0, 0, 0. So select your mesh, press D, and then start moving your pivot around after you've uh, turned on snap to grid. You can also zoom in and then snap it to grid. Once you're done, hit D again, and you're good to go. Again, once you do this, it's just a safe bet to zero out everything again. So I totally recommend that. Hold down spacebar, go to modify, and then um, freeze transformations. After you do that, hold down spacebar again, and go to edit, and let's delete by type. Let's delete our non-deformer history, and then let's delete our history. Uh, once we do that, we'll be good to go. This will allow us to make sure our character is, is primed and ready to go. Save this file out. This file is saved out as your base mesh or whatever you want to call it, underscore mesh. So now let's open up a new scene. Once you have a new scene, what we're going to do here is reference in our character. Referencing in our character is going to allow us to have a clean character that's referenced into our scene, meaning that if you want to make any changes to the model or you want to do anything differently to the model down the line or add garments, hair, whatever it is, you can do that in the uh, original file we just created and it will get propagated down to all the files that are used as a reference. Now it'll be important if you do this after we set up our rig and do our skinning pass, which is going to be much later, then you're going to have to weight that to a joint or to a bone or what have you as well. But for this purpose, we just want to make sure we're using it how we do in the industry. The, I'm just telling you some of the practices that we go through to ensure that 
you know, if other people need to touch the file, they can just focus on touching one file instead of going into your rig file or going trying to find the file that you're using that's exported when they can just update the model because it's all referenced in. So now we should be back on a clean scene of Maya. Once we're in here, we want to go down to our reference editor. Once we're in our reference editor, we want to select this. It's adding or creating a new reference. So now we want to we want to go to where our mesh file was at that we were just on and we will go reference. All right. See, so because we were in a new scene, you may get a pop up that tells you that um, you're at 24 frames. So now we're going to want to go back to our our windows. We're going to go back to setting and preferences, preferences, settings, 30. So set this back to 30. Save. You'll notice that the mesh may not have textures on it. You can select this icon right here. And that'll just uh, turn on your textures, make them visible. So now we have our character referenced in, which is perfect. This is how we're going to want this to be set up. Um, so now let's save this file. So we're going to save as and save this as the underscore rig version of your file. All right. I like to leave this at zero. It does a 1.25 by default. Once this is at zero, you're good to go. Now we're going to go right into creating our rig. Uh, after you've installed the Art V2, you should see this Art 2.0 up next to the help on the action bar, the top action bar in Maya. So you want to select that and go to Rig Creator. Once you're in Rig Creator, what you want to do is you do not want to move this right here. This is your root. You leave your root at 000. zero, zero that's fine. Don't delete it. If you delete it, you got to start over. It leaves some kind of um, uh, parts of the file. Once you delete it, it still leaves it in the file. And you won't be able to create another rig unless you start completely over. So be mindful of that. Once you have this uh, selected, you want to just go down the line over here. There's torso, legs, joints, head, uh, chain, and arm. We're going to do these in order. The other thing to keep in mind is um, the global mover controls. This is what you want to stay on pretty much the whole time because it's going to allow you to move around each part of the body into the location you want it to be moved. Things you need to keep in mind is for the legs and arms, you don't want to really break um, your joints. So for an example, if you have like your leg, you know your knee bends on one axis. I mean, you can get some play, but that's you rotating the hip and doing other things. So for the knee joint, when you bend your leg, you want to make sure that uh, you're not bending it out on the axis, like flaring the calf out or in. That's going to break your IK handles, and it's going to also break your rig when you go to uh, build rig and skin it. So you want to make sure that you can position it just by selecting the hip and rotating it. And I'm just giving you that as a disclaimer. We're going to talk about that more as we do it, but I just want to let you know um, that you need to look out for that. So for torso, boop, press torso. It's going to show you this pop-up where you can add a module, and it's going to show you what it's going to be parented to, which is your root bone. So we're going to go create. Once it's created, it's already, or it should already be where you can move it around positionally. So you want to move it into position. You want to use R. The R key will allow you to scale. So you can scale right in here. Scale this down to where it fits. You may go, oh yeah, that looks like it fits, but it kind of doesn't because everything's kind of off. You're going to want this to be conformed to her or to your character as, be as best as possible. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, you can also move things around more once you have it set up like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press, I'm going to turn off the G, which is the global, global uh, mover controls, and we're going to turn on the mesh mover controls. So once we get it in the ideal position with the hips, which is what I'm focusing on right here, this area, then we're going to go in and we're going to move the mesh of these so that they're aligned better visually so that we don't have this weird offset for the character. So you may want to uh, move this around and scale it. 
This is all going to matter when it comes down to placing the leg joints. So that looks pretty good. So we're going to leave that right there. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn this off, turn this on, and then select your next, select this, um, I think it's pink, or more salmon color. You want to select this. And once you select it, you're going to move it on the Y axis forward so that it is actually, the control is actually around the part of the body you want it to control. Now this is just moving the mesh. So it's just giving us a better visual representation of where uh, the control is going to be. Same thing with the next one. You're going to select that and press Y and go up to the next location. And then for the last one, I kind of like to match this up to where the shoulders are going to be. So right in this area, as if, you know, this character has like on like a, a uniform or something, I want the shoulders to match up. Usually that'll that'll help the neck be aligned in the appropriate position and everything. So now that we have that, you can go over to the uh, rig creator uh, box and then left click on torso. Once you left click on torso, um, it'll open up more things you want to do and you want to bake your offsets. But first, let's go back to G. And once we're in G, you know, deselect, select the main um, pelvis control and then just go to big offsets. Boop, baked offsets. If offsets are good. Um, it looks like it still moves the controllers back, but we just want to have a good representation of where um, where the mesh is for the character. So now we're going to uh, start working on the legs. So it's cool. You can do one leg and then mirror over the other leg if your character is symmetrical. If it's not, then um, you just have to do each one by you know, manually by hand. So let's click on leg. Once you click on leg, you're going to want to, you know, pick which leg you're going to start first, the left or right side. If it's the right side, you're going to want to select uh, right side right here. And you're going to also put like an R in here for the suffix. We're going to be working on the left leg. And then you want to make sure it's to the pelvis is the parent, not the root. So select pelvis add your suffix, make sure this is selected correctly, and then click create. Now that you have the leg created, you are going to want to only move this around and scale it. Now, as you can see, this character's feet, they're flared out a little bit to the right. The way you're going to want to do that from, you know, what I've learned and from what I've done from doing things over and over and over is you're going to want to just rotate from here on this ball joint to make sure that it fits correctly. So we're going to move this around and we're going to scale it up so that the knee fits over the knee on the character. But then when we get down to the foot, we're actually going to have to rotate on our Z to make sure it's flared out the same way. And this is what I was talking about with earlier with, with the knee. If you take this knee and you start flaring this out where you're bending it uh, this way or this way flared out, it's going to be totally broken. Uh, what I've noticed it does is that it takes the toe bone, uh, which will encompass, you know, the little the toes down here, and it'll offset them for some reason. I think that's either a bug in the system because it does allow you to conform, you know, these this rig to your model the best way possible. And if you do that, the repercussions is that it just it doesn't really work with the how you're doing it or how it's being done. So what I've learned is that, you know, start with your leg. Let's scale this up. Once we scale this up, we just kind of want to get a general idea of where the knee is going to be. So you can see I'm just using this as an indicator right here to where the knee is on the character. And so this socket joint right here is where you're going to want to have the hip it meet up with the pelvis. You're going to want to have, just like in real life, your knee joint is not in the very back. It's right in the center of your knee. So you're going to want to keep this in the center of your knee. Uh, you're n you may not want to rotate it. Usually the legs are straight down on the character. If your legs are not straight down, then they're kind of at a 45. I recommend putting the legs straight down, which means you go back to your model file and you update that. 
Um, sometimes we do the arms at a T, but you get better deformation when they're at a 45 because of the range of motion. Now, if your character's doing a bunch 